Hey everyone, in the last video, we looked at gray scaling images using the RGB to gray function, as well as histogram equalization with the histEQ function. Now we're going back and we're going to take a look at thresholding images. I'm using the bridge image, this is the basic example, converting it to black and white, then rotating the image here, making a copy, and then showing it. Here is the basic image we're starting with, perfectly in grayscale. And now we want a threshold. Threshold divides the image into a foreground and a background. The foreground is the brighter pixels, and those are all converted to white. And the background are the darker pixels, which are all converted to black. So that threshold will split the image. To see this, Let's set the threshold initially to 0.5, which is right in the middle, and it'll grab the middle pixel value depending on what type of data type you're working with. So the data type that we have is uint8, which holds values from 0 to 256. This will take 0 0.5 times that and say any pixel value that's lower than 128, we make it black any pixel value that's greater than 128, we make it white. This will effectively split our image in half and give us only white and black. And hence we use a function called imbinarize because white pixels are a value of one and black pixels are a value of zero. We do imbinarize on the image and then we're going to run that threshold over it that we defined right here. Lastly, I'm going to use the imshowPair command to compare the raw image to our new binarized image. We can run this, and we'll see now that the lighter pixels in the original image were converted simply to white. So everything that was bright is now white, everything that was dark is now fully black. It's kind of just a cool way to look at an image, but there's actual practical uses to using these thresholds. Let's say someone asked you in this image to pick out the waterfall. The waterfall is right here in the center of the picture. Well, how the heck would you do that? If you're clever, you'll notice that the waterfall are actually some of the brighter pixel values, and maybe if we set a higher threshold, we'll be able to isolate those with just white pixels. Let's try 0 0.8 as our threshold here. And you can see we're getting closer. We still have some of the air underneath the bridge here, some of the, uh, the water. I think it's this piece of ice right here is still showing up. And then some things in the plants. We can keep trying to find a manual value. Let's put that to 0 0.9. And that's pretty good. You can see we get the top of the waterfall and then the main portion that's coming down right there. And if you were then to count these pixels up and divide it by the total number of pixels in the image, you'd have a percent waterfall calculation, right? Because these pixels represent something that you're interested in. You count those pixels divided by the total, and that gives you a fraction of the interested object over the total image. You can do a similar thing. Let's say we want to pick out the darker objects and, and know what portion of this picture is land and maybe not sky and not water. Well, the sky and the water are brighter, so let's try a lower threshold and see what happens. Maybe 0 0.2. Ah, uh, that looks like it's too low, but you can see that the, the land is surviving here, right? It's kind of fuzzy and we lose the tops of the land. That's where the light's probably hitting off. We still have some plants getting involved as well, but we can always clean up more mess and we'll do that throughout this image processing series. It's just good to know how to take these approaches with the thresholds. There's one more thing I need to show you, and that's letting this threshold be automatically determined using an algorithm. It's called Otsu's method, O-T-S-U, and we can call it by using the gray thresh command. And we'll do gray thresh on the image. If we run gray thresh on an image, we'll see we get a single threshold value out. And then we take that threshold value and put it into our imbinarize function. And Atsu's method, it's doing something called, I think it's minimizing the intra-class variance between the different thresholds in the picture. 
basically it's giving you a better representation of the things that are white that should be white and the things that are darker that should be dark. Let's run this. And here you can see it looks like our threshold value is about 0 0.5 in this image. But using different images, you'll see different thresholds. Let me jump over to the pyramid image and we'll take a look again. Here we do pyramid.jpg. I do not need to rotate this image. We'll go ahead and run this over. And you can see that the Atsu's method gave us a threshold of 0 0.55, and it kind of splits it into a portion that's going to be all white and a portion that will be darker. That's all for this video. Thresholding is a great first step after you've done your conversion to RGB. And then from here, you can clean things up. We can get rid of some of this noise that we're seeing in the images to get better, more accurate estimates of what size objects are in the image. That's all for this video. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.